just wondering, how, how does your mind work? How, how, what are you thinking about now? What's lockdown? So, so first of all, how, thank you for having me. Uh, publisher, it's lovely to be here. Um, you are one of those people that helped me to build my brand. So I'm totally, totally grateful. Um, you told my story. You constantly um, celebrated me at every milestone uh, from when I had only one store. No, actually, when I didn't have a store. <laughs> and I remember you coming to interview me in my first studio in VI um, just before I had my, my first child. So I'm sure about 19 or 20 years ago. And you came by yourself. When I saw you, I was shocked. The, the whole population of city people coming to interview me, you know. And I remember when I began to transition from being a bridal makeup artist to now building a, a beauty business, um, you came again to interview me. And I remember the headlines and how people were like, oh my goodness, how can this be? You know, but I'm grateful for how um, you've helped to support our industry, um, support the events industry, and also to support our brands personally. And so I would like to say Thank you very, very much. I couldn't have. I was so excited when you called me to come on this on the yeah. Instagram live with you. You're welcome. Um, it's it's lovely you. to see what you've done so far. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank so you. what have I been up to in the last uh, three months? So when we first heard about uh, the first case of, of um, COVID-19 in Nigeria, uh, because our business is such a high-touch business, uh, we're very big as a business. We're very big on inter customer interaction, customer engagement. So at multiple levels, whether it's in our distribution business, uh, where we distribute our own products and other products across uh, di different channels in Nigeria, we are constantly interacting with our distributors, uh, whether the large ones or the micro ones. And then um, as a retail business, we have retail stores across the country. Yet again, uh, we constantly, we have professional makeup artists attending to customers. And what that means is that we are interacting closely with our customers, even in our retail stores. We have stores in Abuja, Kano, Kaduna, Port Harcourt, Enugu, Asaba, Wari, um, you know, and the likes, and in Ibadan. And the idea is we want our customers to feel special. We want them to know um, that we are there for them. And so we are very, very communal in how we respond. And so the minute that happened, we realized with our school, we train people to become makeup artists in our schools, we're teaching at close proximity. And so we knew that we are either going to be exposing our employees. And safety was so important to us. We, are, we, call our, we always say that we are a people company. We're very focused on our people. So the first reaction was to shut down business immediately so that we do not expose any of our staff to the virus. And of course, we have a lot of, you know, as they say, now first we don't chop belly food, we we'll do makeup, <laughs> right? Uh, and so it meant that our customers are very well traveled. And we realized that a lot of the people who were, who, were, um, who were being tested positive were people who either came in, you know, frequent flyers. And, and so we knew that this, this would be our customers. And, and immediately, we shut down our stores. Uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. But that was my first response is, I'm not going to let anybody be king, come die for my hand, you know? And so we shut down. And the minute we shut down, we now have to start to think. Uh, about what to do. Initially, it was like, okay, you know, grateful. Let's just rest. But when the end of March came, I realized, no, in China, they've had, where the case came from, they've had, they've been at home for almost three months. If we are at home for three months, what will I do to over almost 200 employees? How am I going to survive as a person? And so I went into shock. And I went into shock. I didn't know how I was going to respond to that. Um, will I take money from our reserves to do that? What if we were not able to open? And, and, and if I take money from the reserves, where is the capital going to come from again? Will we be able to raise money? And those thoughts were coming through my mind. I had to start. I never used to run. I started running every morning. Um, prayer and fasting joined, you know? And just so that I could get ideas and open up my mind. And I struggled quite a bit, but finally come around. And in coming around, what I started to do was to serve. And the minute I started to serve people, I realized that I was no longer consumed in my own um, spheres. Um, and, and, and I began to get ideas. And I, and I think that I've come around to that moment. And where I am now is what's next. And I'm excited for, for what's next. But how, how challenging was it in terms of finding answers to all these uh, problems that you saw um, arising from the lockdown? Um, extremely so. Because, you know, I'm, I've always been someone who 
um, there is a problem and I could pick up a solution and I can immediately act. In this time, I couldn't figure out the solution. Yeah. And because I couldn't figure out the solution, I now became, I started to see myself like, um, like uh, immobile. Like there was, there was something that made me so, I don't even know what I was fear. It was, I just felt like I was stuck. Like I was trying to move, right? And then I couldn't. It was like something was holding my legs, holding my hand, and I struggled, right? Um, so psychologically, I struggled. Um, but I also realized that if I was struggling and I am founder, visionary, right? I have done this for 23 years. And every time we've had a crisis at House of Tara, I have stood up to the occasion, right? And I've always addressed issues from an industry standpoint because I'm bigger than my business, right? I'm here to impact lives at a large scale. But here I was. I couldn't. I just couldn't move. I couldn't take decisions. I couldn't. Every day we're analyzing and talking back and forth. What if scenarios, business continuity, you know, what does this mean? Does this mean that, you know, when they say events industry is out, does it mean that makeup artists will no longer have work to do? Right? If makeup artists no longer have work to do, what does that actually mean? Right? If, um, if we start wearing masks, will we be able to wear lipsticks? Right? Will we be able to wear powders and foundations? Will we be able to sell our products? If the market is shut down, how does House of Tara products sell? And the other brands that we help to distribute, if the open market is shut down, which constitutes a large percentage of our, how our products are distributed, you know, how we do it, right? If government says that um, um, our businesses, salons, and anyone who's doing high-touch business cannot reopen, do we sack everybody? And, and if we sack everybody, what has always, haven't we always said we're family? Haven't we always said that we love our people? So how do you now throw them, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the deep sea and leave them in the deep sea? And making those decisions was very difficult. So I take example, one example example was what are we going to do about paying people, right? So we shut down two weeks, so we didn't work for two. It has never happened before that we didn't work, that we didn't earn any money. <laughs> it, it, it has never happened because we have multiple businesses and somehow you make money from one or the other or you make money from all of them at the same time. But we're talking about shutting down completely. So end of March, we paid everybody a salary. April, we all stayed at home. And as I was struggling psychologically, I realized that there were people who were struggling too. Employees who are single, who've, who've never been married. Work was an ex ex escape for them, right? How we help it. Um, mothers who had, they always had a school to take their children to. And many of our staff are 80% female, and 80% of them, 75% of them are, are it's their first, House of Tara is their first job. So they get married, it is House of Tara that they get married, have their first child. So now they have their mothers, their new mothers, right? Um, who can put their children in a crash when they go to work. But there's no crash. So they are now stuck at home, right? What do they do? So people were going crazy psychologically. I had to rise up and ignore how I felt to start speaking to my team, to encouraging them. I said to have every week I would have a theme, what I'm speaking to my staff about. And I, and I shut down social media. Uh, I wasn't active on social media because I didn't have the time. I was doing Instagram lives with them and just asking, how is your head? How is your heart? And you have to give me a word that describes how you're feeling. And I will pick people one after the other and say, okay, you, tell me. You know, you, what, tell me. And then the people who said they were strong, we asked them, so why, where, where did you find your strength from? What is it that you have done that has made you so full of hope? Can you share with us so that we could emulate and learn from you um, and we did all that and then there were days where some people will be strong this week next week they're down because there's no power uh, next week they're up you know next week they're down and we started to introduce the HR team at House of Tar did an amazing job keeping them engaged from a WhatsApp group right and creating all kinds of things so we had this thing called the hot seat and they would just pick three employees randomly and put them on the hot seats on the, on the, Insta, on the WhatsApp group and you have to, they'll ask, everybody can ask you any question. You can ask you a question like, have you ever had a crush before in the office? Did you ever, there's anybody in the house of that you've ever liked, right? And you have to respond, right? Uh, your wife, how did you meet her? How did you first toast her? Who kissed who first? And you would have all these emojis that they're posting. I just kept us very excited. So every week I had a thing. One week I had mental resilience. Another week I said, house of Tara is not our source. God is our source. And I had to also help them spiritually. 
right? Mm. In terms of getting people to start reciting Psalm 91, um, mm. which is a psalm of protection, whether you're Muslim or Christian, I said, you know, this is powerful words of encouragement, learn it. So when I say, give me the word, you have to tell me a scripture from Psalm 91 because we believe in the power of protection. And we knew that, you know, we live, Nigeria doesn't have the resources to help our people, right? And so we know that we only have God. And so we encourage our people spiritually as well. Um, and so we, what we agreed as a team was, you know what? We will not end, as long as we're not making money, we will not end our salary, right? Mm. And we put it down in writing. Everybody agreed, right? But the company still gave money and gave people stipends here and there, even though we were not paying our full salary wage bill, right? And we entered into May again. We're going to do basic for everybody, right? We can't pay the full salary. And we're going to wait to see in May. I just had a conversation, wrote a letter to the governor to say, we're not just a makeup company. We actually retail and distribute. Let us reopen. And um, we're waiting to hear a response. If he says no, then we know that we're onto a new June without re re generating revenue, but we have to find ways to generate revenue, maybe not as much as we were generated before, that can keep the business afloat. Hmm. That's, that's a lot of... Um, 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 talking about preparing for our new normal, would, would that be your new normal? I'm, I'm just trying to understand that phrase. I, I, liked, I like yes. that phrase. You used it at some of your... Yes, um, yes. Your, so, yes. So the new normal for us is two things. One of them is, what is, what is our... What were we before the lockdown? What were we before the pandemic? Okay? And the things that we wear, do our customers need them? If they do, at what scale? And how can we still meet that need, number one? Number two, what do we currently have in terms of resources, skills, that we never engaged, but people need that we can begin to explore? And lastly, um, what did we never think about before that we can strategize in terms of um, engaging? So the first one was, what were we before? So we're, makeup, we're a set of makeup artists. Um, we, were, we, could, we were doing photography. We we're doing home service. Somebody's getting married. Somebody's having a party. Somebody's turning milestone birthday. We do makeup for them and blah, blah, blah. Do the customers still need that? Yes, some still do. And because they need them, how can we still serve them? And so we decided in terms of we put a safety mechanisms in place. Number one, every house of Tara makeup artist now has to wear an overall a PPE. So it's a personal protective, protective equipment that you have to wear every time you attend, you go and interact with the customer. You have to wear face shields. You have to, no more wigs, no more weave on. You have to mm. have your natural hair all plaited, but your hair has to be covered. Um, mm. And it has to be covered with either a head wrap that can easily be washed with a, by a, a cotton head wrap or a hair bonnet. Uh, you have to wear a mask and you have to wear uh, visors because really the, 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 the virus gets into your eye, your nose, your mouth. How do we protect all that part of you? And we never did makeup with gloves. We always did makeup with our bare hands, okay? But now every makeup artist has had to learn how to do makeup with their hands, with, uh, with, with gloves, wearing gloves. So in gloves. the last... A uh, few weeks, I've been mm -hmm. writing a lot of interviews on television, and I've had my makeup professionally done, right? And each time, the makeup artist had to wear gloves. And now, it's our new normal. They get, they've gotten used to it, okay? Um, also, the use of surface disinfectants. So we've created our own range of, of, um, of um, safety um, products, um, a surface disinfectant, because we work a lot with workstations with, you know, the tables of, of our in our stores, but even the tables at our customers' homes. Um, and so we have that as well. Uh, when you walk into our stores, your, your shoes, your soles of your, sho your, sh your shoes have to be disinfected. So now that's a new normal for us. You, you're going to walk in yesterday. I just had outside the door of, of our stores, so some of the stores that we have. And the booth is the customer walks in and automatically you're disinfected. Right, you have hand sanitizers by the side and capacity to wash your hands and your feet as well. All these are things that to give the customer a sense of uh, comfort and safety that we have thought about them. But also the employees themselves are afraid to come out, except they know that the company has put them in mind as well. And so this, are, this is our new normal in terms of what were we doing before and what are the things that we've put in place to ensure that we can continue some of those things if they're still needed. 
and what resources do we have today that we never engaged before uh, but it's something that the world needs. We've started working on some of them now. Um, we have we built a fantastic structure as a business. Uh, we have uh, a strong HR culture. Um, this is something we can begin to teach people. How can you build a strong culture? How can you build a company where you have you know 25 percent of the employees who have been in the company for more than 10 years? And how how what what did you do? And I need to now sit down and put those things into you know um, what you call documents and we can begin to teach and train uh, people and that can be a new a new normal for us a new business and a new normal for us